All right, so there's been quite a few videos coming out recently of some highly disturbing things with the rioters, looters, psychopaths, whatever you want to call them. Um, of course, last week there was that video of the guy getting kicked in the head while he was on the ground facing away from the guy who kicked him in the head. And then today I saw the video of the guy who was using a fire extinguisher to uh, blast some people who were in the building his business was attached to while it was on fire and he gets punched in the face by someone and gets knocked out cold and he's on the ground with blood coming out of his head then of course there was a video of a man talking to a camera whose family's business which according to him had been around for 30 years laid in burnt ruins behind him because of these people um, it's pretty gut-wrenching to watch. And then there is uh, the footage of this lady sitting outdoors at a restaurant while a group of people basically demand that she raise a fist in the air in solidarity with them as they chant what sounds like white silence is violence. And a lot of props to this lady, by the way. She leaned back when they got in her face and she didn't submit to what the mob wanted and didn't put her fist in the air as some pointless empty gesture. Uh, good for her. There was another angle of this video, too, that showed other patrons at this place putting their fist in the air, and I just thought it was extraordinarily cringy. Uh, but one thing is crystal clear. None of these people are interested in justice, fairness, decency, and certainly not peace. They're not interested in making anything better, improving their communities, or tackling any issue. I mean, they're definitely not interested in debate or any sort of intellectual discussion. As I've always said, those who initiate violence have lost the debate right then and there, as that is the last refuge of someone who is intellectually bankrupt, and it is someone who is philosophically flatlined. They've got the audacity to throw a brick through a window or to set fire to a building, but the most frightening place for any single individual among that mob would be on a debate stage or on a podcast where they need to articulate their position clearly and concisely. They certainly couldn't do that with anyone else there who's, you know, only even half informed asking questions or questioning what they're saying. So they're not interested in any of that. They're not interested, certainly, in trying to make a cogent argument, and they're not interested in having anyone poke holes in their argument, and, you know, they might have to defend their argument. They're not interested in doing that because they can't do that. But they are interested in your submission. Do as they say, or they won't leave you alone, or worse yet, do as they say. Allow them to destroy your business, watch as they torch your life's work, and all you are allowed to do is stand back and take it. And if you dare resist the mob, you may get brass knuckles to the side of your head, or a boot to your temple as you sit on the ground. This, by the way, is why I say, whenever gun control has been brought up in the past few months, that the gun control debate is over. It's done. I never want to hear it again. We simply need to point out how these leftist psychopaths behave as a reason why it's non-negotiable now. I mean, it's always been non-negotiable, but this should seal the deal for anyone who was on the fence over it, I think. But these videos are just disturbing. Some of them are very graphic and very telling. And the biggest thing it should tell anyone who still has a functioning brain is that these people don't care about fixing anything. They don't even care about racism. They don't care about police, police brutality. That may have sparked it, but now it's all about power and control. You can tell that they're getting an adrenaline kick that they're missing from other parts of their life. They get a feeling of superiority because when they're in their mob, they can make people do things. They have command over people and it makes them feel strong. They can wreak havoc on people's businesses and it gives them a sense that they did something. They made a change. They had an impact. Um, a horrible change and a tragic impact, but they made that impact nonetheless. So this is it. There has to be a point and I think they are well beyond that point that people need to start standing up against them. And it could be a really rough lesson for some of these people because I don't doubt some of these rioters are aimless, immature teenagers. And I don't look forward to some rambunctious teenager being shot because they were throwing a Molotov cocktail through a window. But not one of the rioters should be surprised at all when that happens. People are on edge. The moment they see covered faces and people acting crazy, they may just opt for grabbing a firearm, and I really don't think that whatever sick satisfaction you may get from destroying stuff is worth a bullet coming your way. 
But anyway, it's all been horrible and tragic, and I'm fairly certain people are getting pretty fed up with it. Fed up with the stupidity of it all, because that's all it is, and also not for nothing. They're fed up with the fascistic form it takes, because in case you forgot, despite being called Antifa, these people are behaving in a way that is indiscernible from fascism. They derive pure glee and joy from being able to control other people and being able to destroy people's life's work. It's exceptionally pathetic. Um, but that is all for now. Like, subscribe, share, and take it easy.